let me just go a little further with that. Um, yeah. So are you are you advocating for no tax increases, sort of like a George Bush statement, no tax increases, read my lips, no new tax increases? Or would you say they should be, you're more concerned that the legislators, it's the first thing they're looking to, and you'd say it ought to be a last resort after every other effort's been exhausted? I think that the, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to sort of echo a politician of the 90s. I don't think that's fair. I think that we have to look at every situation um, separately. And right now with COVID-19, I mean, as I said, when we began, this is really unprecedented. So it's important to look at this particular situation. It's not about, um, you know, blanket statements. But I think that the way that the, that the, poli- I mean, the, the considerations on the table they seem to be about, okay, well, you know, the, the gas price right now is at a record low. Let's increase the fuel tax. It's basically what I'm seeing is how do we, a very myopic view um, of how do we fill the budget hole. And it's just about various kinds of um, tax increases. I'm not really, and that, going down that path, it's not just about, oh, don't increase this tax or that tax. I think it's just, I would advocate what I am advocating for is a very different point of view, which is, well, what we're talking about is we need to increase um, revenues. So, as I said in my press release, the only sustainable way and the only moral way to do that right now is by diversifying the economy, by deregulation, and by growing uh, creative enterprise and private enterprise and, and going in a different direction where we're opening up our economy as opposed to shackling it further with more tax burdens, with more punishing regulations and, and more taxes. So it's a very different mindset. You know, that's sort of, when you have a different sort of paradigm of how do we solve this problem, then the solutions will, you know, be different accordingly. So, Meg, to open up the economy and allow for some new potential income to come into the state, would you be open to policies around gambling in the state, and would you be for um, opening up the uh, the business, uh, opening up businesses to allow cannabis to be sold in the state of Vermont? Why is that, why is that the way to go? I mean, if I'm talking about diversifying the economy mm-hmm. and opening up business, why is it about marijuana and gambling? I, I don't know. I mean, why do you, why is that? You know, I just brought that up because they're there are industries that are not here in this particular state, and I'm just, I was just thinking about what kinds of new income could you potentially bring into the state? So here's another thing that we don't have in our state. We don't have, um, we don't have factories. We don't, and by factories, I mean things like, uh, I don't mean coal plants. I mean, you know, Tesla, for example, wants to leave California. There's no reason why we can't have that. Amazon was looking for a new headquarters. There's no reason why we can't have that. And, I mean, these are really big, large-profile industries, I mean, companies. There are so many other medium-sized companies. There are so many other mom-and-pop shops that would like to be here or that were once here but have, have gone. Well, I don't understand why we need to look at new forms of creating revenue when we have great ways, you know, we have normal industries that, are, that don't come with negative societal consequences why can't we just look at doing that? We have, a, you know, a lot of land use regulations. There's a, a great focus on, you know, um, environmentalism at the, at, the, at the expense of industry. So why don't we just look at, you know, deregulating that and allowing normal businesses, mom and pop shops that want to, that have been here. So here's a great example. Vermont or candy um, was, is, a, is a candy um not mom and pop, it's a small business, small to mid-sized business that was uh, created in, in Vermont in 1950, and it was by the Handy family. And just two years ago, they had to shut down. They had to shut down. Why? I mean, they employed a lot of people in southern Vermont. But they had to shut down because of all the taxes and all the regulations, and they just weren't able to, you know, make a profit anymore. They just weren't sustainable. So we don't need to go into gambling and into marijuana that definitely obviously come with negative societal consequences when we have something as simple as candy that is a proud, has been a proud uh, with maple, has been a proud uh, tradition of Vermont, but now can't 
is no longer sustainable here because of the tax burdens and the regulations. So here what you're saying. So let's talk about for a minute, you know, again, attracting businesses to Vermont. You brought up Amazon, you brought up Tesla. My mm-hmm. my thought process with with companies like that is they would not see Vermont as being um, an enticing place to be, not just because of taxes, but because of one, our basic infrastructure here, and two, and the most important, is our uh, employ- employment base. We just don't have the population in order to support the businesses that they're talking about trying to create. Um, so what other kinds of businesses would you try to bring into the state of Vermont or, or would you be talking about? So here's another example. Actually, I, I disagree with that because when you, I mean, what makes you think that when, let's say, let's just wave a magic wand and say, okay, well, here we are um, bringing in Tesla. I mean, employees would come with that, right? It, would, it wouldn't just be a, a brick and mortar structure and then it's up to the people of Vermont to populate it. I mean, people all across the nation would come and work there. It's, an, it's a functioning you know, viable business that's that's doing really well. But here's another example. There was a proposal um, by uh, by a company in in Utah to um, buy uh, land around VTC in Randolph, and their proposal was that they would bring their employees and their families to Vermont. So, and it's not just that you know you create structures and then expect the people of Vermont to. Populated, as I said, but here's why Vermont wouldn't be enticing because of our sales tax, because of our income tax, because of our whatever all the various taxes. If let's say you know, and we're always competing with New Hampshire, right? I mean, that's our twin state. So if we had a similar, um, you know, pro-business friendly tax structure, uh, why wouldn't we be enticing? And you know, one follows the other. It's the whole chicken egg thing. If you have a business, if you if you want to move. You need a, a, a tax base. You need a tax code that allows that, that makes it enticing to come here. And when that happens, then you have young people come. You have families come. Because right now what we're seeing is uh, um, middle-class families and young people abandoning Vermont. And there's no reason why that would happen if we had opportunities for upwardly mobile careers, if we had opportunities to create wealth, to own property, to... Um, for young people like myself and my husband to buy a house, to have children, to save for retirement. Right. Those are, you know, they're all interconnected. But at the heart of it is the economy. And it's really important for us to understand that simply by, by making it, you know, a, a less of a tax burden and deregulating it one by one, all the problems like the demographic crisis okay. um, and, you know, and having jobs and wealth and, and these and the tax revenue problem that Senator Ash yep. talked about would get resolved. Um, we are talking with Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor Meg Hansen. Just a-